For me, as an operator, blocking a scene is so important. But if it's a scene, there's a complex choreography and there's a number of artists, you should always, always block it, no matter what the budget is. And unfortunately, sometimes it's seen as a waste, you know, sucking up time in the day because, you know, you may spend an hour and a half when you get to set and just looking at how a scene plays. People get agitated. Why haven't we started shooting now? It's, you know, 10.30 and we haven't shot. But that, in my experience, is just time well spent because Completely. for the rest of the day, you go to it and you go through with a method and a structure to what you're doing. When I look at something, a rehearsal, for example, you begin to see the, the, the narrative of what's actually happening. You begin to see the information mm -hmm. that you require. You, you map in your head how yeah. it's going to be covered. You know, where the, the, the close-up will come in, what mm -hmm. close-ups, you know what I mean? And then the director of photography and the director will get involved and they will clarify that whole thing. But you will start with your own personal map. Mm -hmm of where you're heading for and how you're going to develop that. You, know? mm -hmm. you read the script yeah. and you have, as you say, you have your own idea of how that scene is going to run and, oh, you know, that looks like uh, we could do that in three shots or that seems to me to be a very complex scene and we're going to have to set up a number of different camera positions to explain the choreography or whatever. Uh, then the problem is, is you arrive on set and it throws up its own problems of where people can stand, where they can be. Then the director will say, oh, you know, I want to play it all from his point of view or her point of view, you know, so I don't want to do this. I, you know, so there's all these different things that you have to take into account. When you naturally read a script as an operator, I mean, you have camera positions, you're running through it and you're working it out yeah. as you go along, you know, it just pops into your head as how it would play. I mean, I read a book, I don't know what happens to you, and I visualize it somehow. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure that most people is exactly the same, but you visualize it, you create your own idea of what that world is and where you are and what they look like and, you know. And, and also, if you have a, a working relationship with a the DOP or a director, you may have done two movies before with them. You kind of get an idea of how they're going to approach something. So, you know, you can predict a, a little bit of you, what you're going to need on, on the scene or how you're going to do it. But then, of course, you have to get rid of all of that. Now, all of your preconceptions, once the director and the DOP tell you how the scene's going to play, so then you kind of adapt. Sometimes directors, the first ideas that they have are incredibly interesting and they are right. But the process of filmmaking, by the time they get to the set, for various reasons, they might have shy of that idea. And sometimes if the operator has that information, you can remind them and that triggers something else, you know? The idea of stand-ins has changed over the years. I mean, we used to have stand-ins that were the same height, color, complexion, had the same hair as the actors. But now we just have somebody from the AD department who happens to be free, you know, so you'll have somebody that's six inches shorter than your actor. So how can you, you know, line a shot up? How do you know the height of the camera to set? All of that sort of stuff. But if I often say, look, if we we don't have proper stand-ins for the actors, we might as well just wait until the actors come and block it then. It's, and then it's, go it's straight far easier, into it. you know, especially if, you know, sometimes say, for example, it's, it's a, a very simple thing. Somebody sitting on the chair. The actors will always sit different because they sit different, because the performance is different, whatever. Did you get a stand-in? And unless they're really switched on, they will just sit on a chair. But then, what is sitting on a chair? I'm sitting on a chair, but I'm also sitting on a chair. Now, that in composition <laughs> changes, you know? Mm. So you said something with, with the standing that you think, oh, this is it. And then the actor comes in and leans forward, and now she's got 
lamb growing out of her head or mm. a plant growing out of her head um, because it's all time and money really bottom line is that you know unless you are a big name director they don't get pushed you know mm. you, you sometimes work with, with with directors that unfortunately are not really supported correctly so therefore they are being pushed all the time you know and and it's false economy. Blocking is incredibly important, not just for us, but for everybody.